Okay, so today we're going to do washing machine training. Okay, and so our plan is to uh, provide you with enough detail, understanding of the why, the how, the what, and we're gonna start with this machine first, which is just a top load Maytag washer. walk through um, just top to bottom uh, number one the documentation that the manufacturer provides for us and then number two we'll start getting down to some of the documents and start really digging into the machine first things first is the warranty page okay so if you look inside so if you had a customer's home and they look inside their manual you're gonna notice in the back usually right before it changes languages on us there's gonna be a warranty page. And why is this important? It's important because many times we'll notice that something is covered that a customer would normally, what a customer would believe they have to pay for. So if you look at the washing machine, a couple things is the drive motor, stator and rotor, the wash basket, side walls only. So if those things um, are the issue for their are, the, are those things that are causing their problem, you can get on the phone with Maytag, which actually Maytag is owned by Whirlpool. So you get on the phone with Whirlpool and you can say, hey, you know, here's the model number, here's the serial number, here's what we're dealing with. Is this issue covered, like it's even parts? You know what I mean? If they cover parts, then labor isn't so bad and it may make the repair affordable, right? So what's the downside? Downside is, Parts aren't coming anytime soon, right? Yeah. So if somebody wants to fix same day, next day, that's not gonna happen going back to the manufacturer. Manufacturer's gonna take maybe three to seven business days to even get the part shipped to the customer. And then we have to go back and, and do the repair. So that's the key thing about the warranty information. And then it goes through and tells you what's not covered. And you'll always see what's not covered is uh, usually a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then it goes into the different languages, okay? Uh, warranty is pretty straightforward. Owner's manual. Now understand, this is stuff that the, uh, the virtual assistants are going to put on your file. Okay? So why is the owner's manual important? It's important because, well, first of all, it'd probably be important if I got the right owner's manual language. So let's go back. Okay. So owner's manual. All right, here we go. It's important because this allows us as technicians, as experts, to understand how the machine was designed and understand that there are certain things that the manufacturer has said for this specific machine that we need to be aware of, okay? Um, so if we start talking about insulation, drain, and actually I'm gonna go down a little bit. So one of the things I would tell you is sometimes you have a machine that's not working properly because it's not leveled properly, right? So if you look here, it says, hey, this one has a adjust leveling feet. Some have it where you just pick up the machine and the feet automatically drop down to level wherever it is. That's the older machines. Uh, but here, at least you'll know, hey, you know, I need to go clockwise. I need to use this type of tool. Um, I need to make sure, you know, on the installation checklist, if I do an install, faucets are on, washers level, everything's tight, hot valve, cold valve, grounded to a, a three-prong outlet, things of that nature. So next thing we're gonna talk about is service pointers. Service pointers are very important as well. Why? When a problem is reported to the manufacturer, the manufacturer goes and identifies every model that's affected, right? So in this case, we have top low washers, noise during spin. So it said, hey, we've gone through, done the research, we identified that all these top low washers have this issue. So now we're gonna put a technical service pointer out so that the field understands what the issue is, when it was released, action required mandatory. So this is the mandatory fix. No different in your car, right? They identified, hey, brake calipers are defective. They're gonna send out a service bulletin, you know, across the United States or across whatever country and say, look, this is a problem. This is how uh, critical it is. This is the concern. So let's walk through this one. Possible concern. All right, I won't do all the talking. Nava, can you read what the possible concern is, please? 
customers may experience noisy operation during their interme intermediate spin cycle. This noise sounds similar to a metal or grinding, metal grinding or clicking sound and will emit from the control area, not the gear case transmission. Okay, that's good. So this is saying customers sitting at home, running their machine, right? They get noisy operations during the intermediate, intermediate spin cycle. So it's gonna sound like metal grinding or it's gonna be a clicking sound. And it's gonna emanate from the controls area, not the transmission, okay? Because they said that, hey, you may think it's a transmission if you're far away, but as you get up closer, you're gonna notice that it's the control unit and it's one of the triacs on the actual control unit that's clicking. Potential causes, so it could be several issues. The tri well, on this one, it's gonna be the triac on the appliance control unit. So how do you correct it? You run the unit in surface diagnostic mode, high speed spin, replace the ACU control with the new ACU that has been flashed with new software, which has eliminated the noise. So in that case, it did a software fix. So you can imagine if you're on a job, right? And this problem comes up and you have no idea about the service pointer. Man, I'm telling you, you're gonna be throwing parts at it. You're gonna misdiagnose it. You're gonna be sitting there scratching your head. Because my first thought is, if I start hearing clicking while it's spinning, I'm down here in the motor and the transmission. I'm like, something's wrong, right? Something's failed. Maybe a bearing or something. When it's actually really just gotta replace the uh, control unit, control board. So that's the benefit of the service pointers. So once again, what our office does is they'll go through and grab all these service pointers and put it on your job. So when you're on the job, you can just pull it up and know what you're dealing with. Any questions on service pointers? It makes sense. My main point here is that's why pregame you have to read the documentation. It's, it's in your best interest. It because the problem may already be solved. Um, and you just walk in, give a solution, and, and have confidence that you're doing it, that you're doing it the right way. Next, we're going to go into the tech sheet, which I love my tech sheets. All right, it's a lot of stuff on this tech sheet, y'all. So we're gonna make this bigger. Okay, so tech sheet is what it says. It's a technical guide that you use that um, the manufacturer has put together. It's gonna talk through things like service diagnostic modes. It's gonna talk through error codes, what they are, um, what they mean, uh, what are common uh, issues with the error code and how to resolve them. It's gonna walk you through the wiring of the machine so these things are very powerful as well. And it's gonna show you right here how to activate the service diagnostic mode. So each one of you will get an opportunity to activate the service diagnostic mode. Now, Jake's done it a couple times, so you know he has a cheat code, but. Um, all right. So as you can see here, fault error display. Let's go, let's go over here. You see where the error codes are. Now, this is important too. You can see the resistance on the far right. You see the resistance of each of the components. That's critical, right? If you know the resistance and you test for the resistance and it's the right resistance, you have confidence that that part's working correctly. If it's the wrong resistance or OL, man, it's like, ah, oh, we got a problem. So then you guys dig a little deeper. And you got the diagnostic test modes. Tells you what lights are going to be on. And you have the other languages and you have the wiring diagram here. So you see the power cord coming in, neutral line and everything it goes to. Okay. I've been doing a lot of talking here. So who should be first? Nava. All right. So we're going to put this thing in, uh, yeah, we're gonna put it in test mode, uh, service diagnostic mode. So you're gonna go through, you have fun with this. Aren't you? <laughs> you're gonna go through <laughs> and activate the service diagnostic mode in this machine, please. To put it in test mode, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna reset. And so when you reset, you're gonna click one to the left on our control knob. And then and you have to do this in unison. Then you're gonna go 
one, two, three clicks to the right, one click to the left, and a final click to the right, okay? So that's how you get into service diagnostic mode, okay? So after you, after you finish service diagnostic mode, then based on the lights, and you're gonna see, and these, right? So you should see wash, you see wash, spin, wash, spin, I'm sorry, wash, rinse, spin, and done on the front? Yep. All right, so then based where the lights are at, that tells you what mode you're in, okay? So in the customer's home, that's what you're gonna to wanna to do, right? You already have the manual, it's gonna tell you to do that. This is the first thing you wanna do in this type of washer. You know, especially since there's no panel that tells you like F5, E1 or whatever, you gotta come through here and you gotta, you gotta figure it out. You're at the customer's house and you're in test mode, right? So now you're like, man, what's going on with this machine? So then, all right, so from where I'm at, it's blinking, I need to get into my diagnostic test modes. Uh, let me get a volunteer. Uh, Nava. So, can you go to the next step to get it? <laughs> we're gonna get our fault code display mode. So we're gonna go to done, right? So you should be moving to the right on your control knob. And so you want that to be the only light on. Bam, okay? So then done is gonna get you there. And so from here, and let's, let's go through the instructions first. All right, so. Uh, successful entry, bam, we entered it. Okay, so we're good there. And now from where you're at, you should be able to press the, okay, press and hold the, uh, okay, we don't wanna exit. Go ahead and hit start. Okay, so bam, you got full blinks. So that tells us there's no codes on here, which is a good thing. All right, so now, Hit start again. See if you can go back one on your control. Okay, go forward one, forward another. All right, so we do have an error code. You have fill, rinse and, done. rinse and done. Let's go back here. See if we have another manual. So we have a tech sheet, technical manual. So let's go here. Do, 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 do. All right, so we're gonna go into the technical manual. It's a little more detailed. All right, so we do it. Okay, got a lot of stuff in this manual. Another manual, so they're perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the technical manual. So we activated the service diagnostic mode, so we're good there. There are several diagnostic modes you can access that are shown in the chart. So you just finished the fault. Let's go through here. So you just finished the fault code display mode, right? And so let's dig down to the fault code display mode. All right, so that's how you, that's how you read the fault number. <clears throat> and if you look here, you have sensing on, da, 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 just to give you an idea. So we're gonna go down to the chart. So these are the viewable fault codes. Okay, so what did you have on as the first one? It was fill? Okay. All right, so here you have sensing on. Um, what were the other two? Okay. All right. Okay, so here you go. And that's the reason why he brought it to us, right? It was off balance load. So if you look here, you had sensing, rinse and done, and then you go back over to the chart. Sensing on, rinse is on, done is on. So that's an F0E5. That's how you interpret what you have. And then you just read down and it tells you. All right, Melissa, you've been kind of quiet over there. So explain to us what an off balance load detected error means based on the chart. Body display when the off balance condition is detected. Check for weak suspension. Basket should not bounce up or down more than once. Clothing should be distributed evenly when loading. Got it, so that's probably one of the most common errors on this, is just off balance. So what happens is over time, right, you got all the load of the water, the clothes, and you have, in each corner you have shocks, dampers, springs, that balance out the tub and carry that load, they just wear out, okay? 
So that's why the customer brought it to us because it was an off balance load that he was getting. So it would start and then it would stop. So Jake took care of that, went ahead and fixed it for him. Um, so I got to call him to, fix, to pick it up. But that's how you read the error codes. So that's why it's so important. Just get in test mode, find out what the control board is sensing, and that gives you your, your starting point. We're gonna get out of there. So go ahead, go ahead and hold start for three seconds. Um, Nava, so we can reset it, please. And that should reset it for us. All right, so Melissa, let's put it back in test mode, please. Okay, you got it back in test mode? All right, so let's go back to our chart here. So as you're gonna see, within test mode, we went through fault code display mode. There's an automatic test mode and a manual test mode. Anybody wanna guess what the automatic test mode, how that differs from the manual test mode? Automatic. <laughs> it's automatic, there you go, all right? So if you go automatic test mode, it starts running through all the cycles on its own, okay? And then, but if you go manual, then you step through each cycle that you wanna uh, pinpoint. And of course, manual is good when you kinda got an idea of what's going on. Like, you know, maybe they say, hey, hot water never comes in a tub. Well, I'm gonna go to manual, I'm gonna go to manual test mode and turn on the hot water valve. Like, I just wanna see, okay? There's no hot water coming in, but there's cold water coming in. And the, uh, and on the wall, the water's on, and water's coming to the machine. I probably have a, a faulty hot water valve. All right. Calibration mode, this is important, okay? Why is calibration mode important? Because, as another tech learned, every time you replace something this machine, you have to calibrate it, okay? And what does calibration do? Calibration takes the control board, which has all the settings from whatever part was already on there, right? And has like memorized how this thing should be operating under normal conditions it helps it control board understand how this new piece is functioning. Because it may be a little different. The specs may be different. It may have been upgraded over eight years, whatever, okay? If you don't calibrate it and you start running this machine, it's gonna start throwing error codes on you at some point. User interface test mode, that's just making sure that these controls are working properly. That way you can troubleshoot like, hey, maybe one of these switches went out or something. Um, and software version display mode. We don't really care about that. We don't care what software version's on it. We just care that it works right, okay? So from where we're at right now, let's go to automatic test mode. And it tells you what light should be on when you're in automatic test mode. Now let's go, let's go to manual test mode. Uh, Jake. All right, so everybody see his lights are on spin and done. So that means he's gonna be in manual test mode. And so now, what do we wanna do? We wanna go and see what manual test mode allows us to test. Okay, so, all right, we got our error codes, we went through that, automatic, we don't care about automatic. Okay, manual test mode. So now, pressing the start button will activate, deactivate each output. When the output is activated, the corresponding status LEDs will flash. Lid must be closed and locked to perform spin tests. That's important. So. If you get down there and you try to start spinning and it doesn't spin, you better verify the lid is locked. That's a safety mechanism, right? It doesn't want you doing a high speed spin and the lid's unlocked. All right, so let's go ahead and lock the lid. That's correct. Well, first of all, did we enter manual? You did? Oh, there you go. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and unlock the lid. Please. See, so if you had a GE tool, that'd be similar to what you're doing on your tool, right? You just run all the functions. All right, so let's go ahead and lock it again. Let's go to agitation, please. And you probably need to know, let's make it smaller so you can know which ones you're doing. All right, so that's gonna be wash and done and lid lock on all right let's go ahead and agitate go to let's go to spin all right motor spins that's going to be wash rinse and lock all right
and that's wash and rinse. So go ahead and stop that. Um, and I want to see, let's go to drain. So drain's going to be rinse, spin, done. All right, got to fill the machine. That's the drain pump kicking on. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and stop that, please. Now let's see if we can do a low spin. Let's go to wash and done. Might take a minute, let's just see. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So, so it has to change gears. So when we look at the bottom, we'll see the gear shifter. I'll just give it a minute. All right, but any questions on how you would go through and do a manual test? All right. Okay, you can go ahead and exit out of there. All right, stop, 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 stop. Okay, everybody feel it? So as you can see, it just takes a minute to get in gear and then start the spin cycle. But once again, you know, customer says, hey, this thing's not spinning properly or making noises doing spin. Pop it in here and do a low speed spin. You know what, let's go ahead and do a high speed spin then. So high speed is gonna be wash and spin. It has a stop. See, you see on top of here, this one has a 10 year limited parts warranty on the drive motor and the wash basket. It's like the manual said. We're gonna give it a minute. I'm just curious how long it takes to, there we go. So now kicking in. Right, so something like this, this is what you wanna run when you get that error because you wanna see for yourself, you know, like what's happening. And so like the customer said, he said, man, this thing was bouncing, you know, hitting the sides because of those shocks were worn out. All right, cool, I'm good with that. And then also if you look through the technical manual, you'll see that, and I, I love this guy, you'll see the problem, possible cause and where you need to check and what tests you need to do. And so all appliance types have this type of chart inside the manual. This is critical. Like I, I would use this just to try to pinpoint, okay, let me cut some steps down and really get to the root of the issue. So now we're gonna really get in, now we're gonna really get into this. Okay, so let's just think through the cycles of a washing machine. Melissa, come over here. <laughs> now, when you think about these appliances, you have to think of form fits function, okay? That's the basic premise of appliance repair. Somebody designed this to function in lieu of it being done automatic, I mean, it being done manually, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, instead of you putting this in a tub, you know, <laughs> putting cleaner in there and, you know, rinsing it out, <laughs> you know, hanging it outside, okay, all right. They created this machine to replace a whole bunch of those functions, okay? So, in its simplest form, what does a washing machine do? It washes your clothes. Okay. How does it get your clothes clean? It washes, it soaks, it spins out the dirty water. Yep, it tries to spin all the water out to get as much out before you go put it in the dryer or whatever the next step is. Um, so, absolutely. So, all you're doing is you're putting clothes in a basket, you're filling it with water, you're putting some type of cleaning agent in there, right? You're agitating it together to get it clean, all right? Oh yeah, I forgot to scrub. Yep, yep, you gotta scrub it, okay? Now, you did all that scrubbing, you got all that cleaner in there, well guess what? Now you gotta dilute it so you can get that cleaner out, and then you gotta spin all the water out to get it dry, mm -hmm. okay? That's all this machine's doing. So as you're troubleshooting it, you're saying, okay, well, it should be doing all this. Where in the process is it failing to do that? And as you usually find that failure point based on the symptoms or the conversation you're having with the customer and your analysis and observation of what the machine is doing, okay? So now so we have that basic framework. We're gonna start going through this thing and really understanding how all the different pieces work, okay? All right, so Jake, 
since you've done this repair before, we're gonna start with you. And we're gonna start with the actual tub and how that is leveled and supported by the rods. Okay. So we're gonna get this top off. So you need, do you need a drill? Yeah. All right, so let me grab you a drill. I'll be looking for this. Use this if you need it. I think it's yours, ain't it? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll hold open. Let me turn this way a little bit. <laughs> All right, we got it. Okay, so I'll hold this up. All right, so get y'all to come around here and see. This is important. Okay, so can you show them where the shocks are at? And we can kind of talk through it. Right here, it's on each corner. Yep, so if you look through each corner, these are, these, and these are brand new shocks he put on, right? Okay. So this, this is what holds the basket in place. And just like a car, yeah. over time, this is, a, this is basically a wheel <laughs> going this way. So over time, as it's bouncing and washing your clothes, right? Those things just wear out. And the, and the common symptom you're gonna get is, you know, or the thing, it's technically walking across the floor. Like it was back on this wall and that was four feet out. It's like, how did this thing get here, you know? So that's the common complaint. So what Jake has to do, and you can kind of walk through it, Jake, but as I understand, you pretty much just pop these out. You gotta pop them up so the old rods correct, or what would you? Yep. So you pop the old ones out, and then so to get them out, you have to lift up the tub. Right. So you have to, you gotta take pressure off of it. Yeah, take pressure off. Like that. See. And then you unhook it from the bottom. You gotta send it through through the bottom. Yep. So you have to pull up the whole tub and then pull it out. Okay. For each for each one, and then yeah. just you go opposite when you're putting the new ones in. You slide them back through. Yep. Yeah, right. And so then you hook them on the clips. Yep. Hook them on the clips. Make sure they're seated in there. Yep. And I think Nava, you diagnosed a Samsung dryer, I mean, Samsung washer that had bad shocks on it. So Zach changed those out and it's been working great. Um, now the only difference you're gonna see on the Samsungs versus these is that Samsung has what they call dampening grease. And that stuff is like thick, okay? And I use the reference of, you know, it's like some wave grease. <laughs> yeah, it's like pomade, right? It's like, and, and it sticks to your gloves. So you have to like buy new gloves and you scoop it out and it's like, you got to lather it in here and that's supposed to help, you know, this, this tub from uh, having too much friction. All right, so, so I just want to explain that part of the system to you. That's a complaint you'll get a lot. And it's usually number one, hey, my clothes, the, the load doesn't finish because what happens is the control board notices this it's gonna stop it because it's gonna keep trying to redistribute the load because it's trying to it's, it's trying to you know balance everything out and if it can't it's gonna stop it and it's never gonna finish and it's gonna give you a uh, a sensing error because that's what sensing is the first step is it senses and tries to balance the load out so you know those washers just start spinning first to try to get the load balanced out before they go into the cycle you know basically you're just gonna once again pinpoint what problem are they having how can I recreate it and then you know, use my manual, my expertise, my knowledge, and just work back from there. We're gonna lean this puppy back after he gets that back on. And we're gonna start looking at the bottom of it. Probably like 60% of the washer types we work on or something sim very similar to this. A lot of Maytags, a lot of Whirlpools around here, a lot of Amanas, and Amanas made by Whirlpool. So you'll start seeing you start seeing the same type of technology and design over and over and over again. So our next step, get a volunteer. Nava and Melissa. All right. So we're gonna turn this one around this way, so the front will be here, okay. and we're gonna lean the control panel on this uh, Stanley, so we can start to get the bottom of it. Okay, lean it back. Perfect. 
Okay, so here's the meat potatoes. So this is our motor, our transmission, our capacitor, our drain pump. So we're gonna go ahead and take, let's take this cover off right here. Bottom screw. So, a couple things. Number one is, have the belt here. So whenever you get like, hey, you know, it's not turning or a burning smell, you definitely want to check the belt just to make sure the belt's intact. Broken belts are common. Um, so one of the things I would, okay, so here's something we're gonna try. We're gonna take this belt off and put it back on. So we're gonna walk through putting this belt back on. Okay. Cause there is a trick to it. I would start. Okay. Say with me. Okay. On the bigger, going into the smaller. Okay. All okay. right. I hear you. Jake, any suggestions? No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, look, hey, you know what? We're here to learn. So that don't take your time. Is it going to stay on? Okay. All right. Good job. No, no. This is the belt that turns the drum. I mean, turns the tub. Yeah. When you, when you press spin, it transfers it, the power down here. This is the motor right here. Bam, there you go. And that's key, right? You just wanna make sure it's down in the groove and you know, the thing doesn't pop off if it runs a high speed spin or something. I've always found it easy, cause I've noticed all three of y'all are going counterclockwise. I've always noticed it's easier to go clockwise, right? Put it on there and start turning to the right. And it just seems to fill the right side and go on easier. Cause it eventually, it eventually catch. Yep, like like I'll hold it right here and start turning clockwise. Okay. Because we're going with it. Yeah, but then like Nava got caught on that too. So yeah, you gotta make sure that starts sitting flat. I think if you keep turning it, it 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 should. Yep. So as we have it here. Now let's walk through the manual because honestly, what's more important than putting, taking it on, putting, it, I mean, taking it off and putting it back on is like understanding what each one of these things is designed to do based on the manufacturer. Like that's the secret sauce, y'all. If you know why, then the how is not difficult. So, and it breaks all this stuff down. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go through one by one. All right, so let's talk nomenclature. Uh, so Jake, let's walk us through, we already took the top off, went through that. Just walk us through what all the components are when we look in from top down with the, with the top up. With the top up? Yep. Uh, so you got the dispenser assembly. Okay, and the dispenser assembly is gonna do what? Um, Absolutely, that's where the detergent yep. um, is gonna dispense once you fill it up, okay. okay. And we have the suspension rods, which I replaced. 
Yep. And that's what keeps the, the cub in place so it's not banging all over the place. Absolutely. That's, that stabilizes the tub. Yeah. That's the suspension rods, correct. Mm -hmm. And then we have the tub assembly, which is the inside. Right? Yep, it's the, it's the whole tub. It comes from the factory, it's just like one big assembly. And then we have the tub room, which is the outside of the tub. Yep. That's, that's what's on top. So that's, that's detachable. You can kind of see the points where you can detach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the impeller is basically the agitation plate, right? So a lot of customers complain about that because, as you can probably imagine, you had the older washing machines that had the uh, they had the tall agitator in it. Now you have a plate, and that plate moves the clothes around this way, but it doesn't really agitate very well this way. So they're not as fresh, they're not as clean, in my opinion, because we went from having a plate to having an agitator, and it's, it's, it's so different, it's so different. Um, Clothes definitely come out smelling a lot better. All right, so let's talk through. All right, let's talk to these bottom pieces. There's a lot here. Um, so, Nava, walk me through. So you got this diagram. You got the bottom of the machine looking at you, which should match this diagram. So let's touch each of the pieces and, and try to explain uh, what they are, so that we can orient ourselves to the actual machine. Motor and the belt that we were just working on. Belt. All right, so that's the belt. So we have that on the drawing, okay? Uh, the pulley. Right, so that's the pull, the splutch pulley in the middle. Yeah. Which is plastic, which is important, right? And the motor. Yep. So you have the motor to the left there, correct? Um, drain hose. Yep, that's the drain hose. Drain pump. That's our drain pump. That's dire directly connected to the bottom of the tub. So we drain the water out, correct? Counterbalance. You have your counterbalance. Uh, wait, wait, what, what are you pointing at the counterbalance? Motor. Use the motor counterbalance. Okay, this machine actually does not have a counterbalance. Because that oh, counterbalance would have been to the right. Okay. Is that fair? Okay, okay. that's our shifter. Cut off. Okay, shifter. Yep, that's our shifter, correct? Uh, so, so shift, just so you know, shifter is like the transmission in your car, okay? That's how you go from agitate to spin, um, high speed spin, low speed spin. So, all right, so let's walk through this. So this is, this is our actuator. This is what shifts gears. Okay. And this fails a lot. <laughs> so I think Jake and I had a job where we had to change out the actuator, okay? So what's interesting, and we'll take this apart. So this actuator moves this little plastic piece back and forth, okay? So when this actuates, so let's say it's going into spin cycle, right? And it's gonna take this, it's gonna move it to the spin cycle. And so what that does is this white piece here, all it does simply goes up and down. That's it. And what does that up and down do? Up and down takes the teeth and moves it to the inner ring and the outer ring of the tub. And that determines spin versus agitate. Like, it's that simple. So if this motor dies, then one of the symptoms you'll have is either it will only spin and won't agitate. So you put it in test mode, you can get it to spin, but it won't agitate. Or you put it in test mode and you get it to agitate, but it won't spin, right? So that validates in your mind that the motor's working, it's somewhere and getting this thing engaged in the right gear. So that limits what you have to troubleshoot. Okay, all right, sorry, go ahead, Novel. Capacitor. That's our capacitor. And a capacitor simply stores power, right? It's the best way to say it, okay? So, do you know how to test a capacitor? Yes. What do you test it for? Close. Close. Micro furs. Oh yeah, micro furs. Yes, 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 yes. So I think we had a capacitor that that had failed. That was on that uh, refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you test the capacitor for micro furs. Only thing is, capacitor is high voltage, so you have to discharge it first. Right. All right. Just remember that part. Okay. Um, any other component? Okay. We're gonna break down the bottom of the machine where we're at. All right. So let's talk about the drain pump. All right, so what are some symptoms of a bad drain pump? 
the cloth. Okay. So meaning the water won't drain. The symptom is the water won't drain. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So you have a customer tells you, hey, I'm washing clothes. Water just sits there. Then it stops or, you know, I hit the cancel button. I hear something vibrating, but no water's leaving. Potentially it's going to be a bad drain pump. Okay. And then you can see here that there's a seal inside the head of the drain pump. And then that seal just seals it right inside here after you screw it down to make sure it doesn't leak. And so when we replace the drain pump, you remove a couple of screws. You can see the screws locations. You got a hose clamp. Uh, key thing on the drain pump is number one, you bring a shop back to get all the water out. Like don't show up to a drain pump issue job without a, a wet vac, okay? And then you wanna be able to have towels because you wanna protect the customer's floor and you wanna be able to have that wet vac like right there uh, so you can pull the water out. The actuator serves several functions. It has a synchronous motor that shifts the sludge slider and monitors the position of the sludge. Of the sludge. The sludge. <laughs> it also houses a transmission speed position optical sensor. That's a lot, right? So what's that really saying? Um, number one, it says, this thing is reporting back to the control board what position the um, sludge assembly is in. Is it in agitate or is it in spin? So if that part fails in there, it's gonna air out on the control board and it's not gonna run the cycles, okay? That's something to remember. So if you're sitting there and you get to test mode and you test agitate and spin and it just starts blinking at you, most likely it's unable to tell what position that's in and that's why it's airing out on you. And it also houses a transmission speed position optical sensor. So this is common across all washing machines. All washing machines have something that's reporting back to the control board to tell you how fast this thing is going. So on your car, that's gonna be your dashboard, right? Which is telling you, look, here's your speed. It's the same thing here. And it, if it can't measure that or report that back to the control board, it's going to error out, okay? So those are two functions that this thing does, just so you know as you're troubleshooting, okay? The lid lock mechanism, we're able to lock this one and unlock it. But sometimes the lid lock will fail. If the lid lock does not actuate, then it will not allow it to spin or agitate or start the function, okay? So when it locks, it goes back to the control board and it's locked. But if there's a problem, like a plastic piece broke off or something, it is not gonna lock. And so you have to replace the door lock. But you can easily test that in test mode. Put it on the lock function, hit the button. If you hear it click, and you see that red light come on, you know your lid lock's good. All right, any questions on the actuator, splutch assembly, lid lock? All right, I have some drill bits here. We need to get this piece off. And you see that red light come on? Good. I look work, working together. It is. Yeah, that's the worst thing, man. You sit in the house and it's like trying to get this joker off. Yeah, we might as well get the air gun on this thing. Oh. All right, okay. so what is this piece called? That is called the um, motor. Uh, That's your motor right here. Um, um, actuator. That's your actuator right here. You, uh, well, you, yeah, you're getting the words in. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, all right, we're gonna, look, we're gonna go back to, we're gonna go back to our, our component access diagram, right? Okay. So there we go. That is the splutch. splutch. That's the splutch pulley. pulley. All right. All right. 
So you know, belts usually go around a pulley, right? Yeah. So you got the motor, you got a pulley here, pulley here. Just All right, yep, please, let's go ahead and take the belt off. Okay. All right, cool, don't break no nails on me. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and pull that off. No, this right here. This? Yep. Okay. All right, so as you can see, this has teeth on it. And these are plastic teeth. And so these things break and wear down over time. And then that'd be one of the complaints, right? Cause like, oh, it's grinding, you know? So it's, it's trying to go and it's trying to turn the drum. All right, drum's turning now, hear it? Yeah. And then if it's not catching, mm -hmm. you'll get that grinding noise. It slips. It slips. That's right, that's basically, it's slipping. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so if you look here, mm -hmm. this is where I told you this is changing gears. All right, actuator, all right, so this is the actuator. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what you do is, because this fits into here, and when the motor actuates, this is what changes gears from one to the other. Okay. So if you, if you pull this, and it's happened before too, right? This thing will pop out. And then it won't, it won't change it from agitate. And you see that, see the, you know, yeah. look at this, see what happens? Mm -hmm. And that's all it's doing. That's all it's doing, is that as it turns, it moves this. Gotcha. Which changes this, mm -hmm. right? So if you see, I don't know if you can see here, like this little indention clip. Mm -hmm. So this clips into there. So if you get like a flathead, you can push this and that's how you pull it out. So you see that, see that tooth right there that catches? Yeah. So that's one. Here, it's two. Okay. And under here, you have your third. Okay. And so when you when you get a new one, you'll have all this in the same thing. Okay. So it comes with a new spring, and that spring just pushes up against here. And like I said, this just moves it, and that spring is what moves it up and down. Okay. And the actuator is what moves this. Gotcha. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it has the optical sensor inside of it, right? So it's monitoring mm -hmm. speed. And then you have your capacitor right here. And it tells you right there your capacitor should be 45 micro Yes. Okay? And just remember, you know, you don't want to touch that until you discharge the capacitor. Because okay. it's, it's high voltage. Gotcha. And, and so to remove this actuator, there's two screws here, and this mm -hmm. thing just drops down. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. So let's go ahead and remove our actuator. So you're gonna need a, oh, you already got some. You're gonna need a Phillips. And just remember, you know, you don't. All right. So, go show everybody what the actuator looks like. As you can see, part of that is up in here, right? Because it's monitoring speed. Okay. Which is similar to what on a dishwasher? That monitors the speed? Well, it's monitoring something inside the machine. That sensor? Um, that monitors how clean the water is? Yes. Um, I know you can't think of it right now, but yeah. it's, it's a similar, similar thing, right? It's, okay. it's optical, so shooting that light across to see what the speed is. Yes. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the capacitor. All right. Okay. Don't get your hand close to that. Ah, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Do not touch it. <laughs> Okay, so now, learning point. When you're dealing with a capacitor, you have to discharge it because it's high voltage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just use something with a rubber tip on it. If you look at that heart to the left of it, you have a rubber tipped tweet. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, so you wanna discharge it, right? You get the rubber tip. And the way you discharge this, uh, you just touch both of these pieces together. 
So, that, so that's one way to do it. The other one is you get two screwdrivers. Okay. Probably longer tip screwdrivers if you can. There you go. Uh, all right. <laughs> that's funny. So you get two screwdrivers and you, you touch those and then you touch the screwdrivers together. What is it? Do you get the, like, the power out or Yeah, it, oh, it's just discharging okay. voltage. That's it. Check that. How do you check this? Well, first of all, I ain't gonna check it with my hand. Uh, we, uh, that's, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna we're, you can. Yeah, I yeah. Was. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I do not. Look, even I'm telling you, don't touch that. So okay. what I do is, I just move forward and start checking for my micro first through my voltmeter. Like if it's gonna blow up, I rather my voltmeter blow up <laughs> than, than, than my hand. All right, do we have a multimeter? Yes. So we can check for micro furs. All right, cool, we'll leave it like that. So what you do is you look at, you look at this, it said it should be 45 UF, that tells you this capacitor is good, okay? So then, all you're doing is taking this, Taking this, and you take this, what do we got? 45.9. 45 so it's plus or minus 5%, yeah. right? So if we're at 45.9, we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we know this is not the problem. Now, when does this come into question? This comes into question when somebody says, oh, the motor started. Like, you know, you don't get an unbalanced load error, right? Everything seems to be working fine. Motor starts and then it stops. So that means the voltage that should be held in here and feeding the motor isn't, this, this isn't holding right. And so whenever I replace, whenever I replace a motor, I always put a new one of these on, um, but I always try to test this and test the motor. Cause you can test both of them, right? You can put your meters on here and you can get, you can get your uh, proper voltage on the motor just by following the manual. And so if you're under here, you might as well test everything to make sure it's working right. But yeah, usually when you start getting it not spinning or something, it's gonna be between changing gears, the capacitor, and the motor. And you gotta test your way to an answer. All right, we we'll go ahead and screw that back in. The key thing which we haven't done is during the job is, man, you wanna take as many before pictures as you can. You have to take a, you have to take a bunch of before pictures. I know your your actual tool sucks. <laughs> Man, you want to take. This is gonna be on the outside, so oh, this. It's all good. All right, so we know we got that there, and then this was gonna be under here. We got that clip at the bottom. Is it in? I don't think I gotta move. Ah. Okay, so this clip needs to be right here. Okay, cool. So we go clip, 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 clip. Okay. And then we wanna just Okay, cool. I wanna test to make sure it actually went down, alright? Okay. okay. I think it's good enough. I'm good with that. How'd you get all the tasks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bam, look at her. Look at that. Like butter. Yep, awesome. All right, so let's get some tools cleaned up here. Now, 
You know, and it's one of those things, right? The more reps you get in, but the cool thing is I'm gonna try to find one of these on like Marketplace. This ain't ours, the customers. I'm gonna try to find one of these on Marketplace and have it in the shop so yeah. we can do the testing and stuff before we go on site. 